Hello all! There are plenty of men in suits all over the internet who can explain financial jibber jabber to you. But don't you always get the sense from them that they're trying to sell you something? They seem very smarmy. You know, what is the bottom line for them? But I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want to encourage you to save for retirement. That is one of my personal bugaboos. So, it is my goal today to explain to you in the most basic, simple, and easiest terms the difference between traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs. R O T H Roth, named for Senator William Roth. IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. And sorry to all my international viewers, but this is basically for American citizens because it has to do with our tax codes and so forth. But I encourage you all to save for retirement as well. The traditional IRA allows you to put money in a fund for retirement before you pay tax on that money, i.e. it is deductible from your tax return as if you hadn't earned that money in the first place. You're not going to pay income tax now on the money you're putting into that IRA. When you reach retirement age and you're pulling money out of your retirement account, you will pay your income tax on your contributions as well as any money you have made through your wise investing. Now the idea behind this is the assumption that when you retire, your tax rate will be lower. You will be paying tax at a lower rate. So why pay a higher rate now on that income when you can pay a lower rate on it later? That's the idea behind it. And of course there are income level requirements and there are contribution limits and that seems to change with time. Now, with your Roth IRA, you earn your money. You have to have earned income to do this. You earn your money, pay your income tax on it now, and then you make your contributions to whatever fund you have designated as your Roth IRA. Okay. And then when you retire and pull money out of that retirement account, you don't have to pay tax on the contributions or on everything you earned through your wise investing. The idea here is, who knows what's gonna happen to your tax rate over time? Is it gonna go up? Is it gonna go down? Who knows? It's a particularly good idea for young people to start their IRA early, early, early for a variety of reasons. One, because if you're just starting out in the work world, you're probably not earning a ton of money and therefore your tax rate is quite low. So later on in life when you're super successful and fabulous, your tax rate might well be quite a bit higher. So pay the taxes now at that lower rate. Also, you want to start saving for retirement as soon as you possibly can so that compound interest can work in your benefit over time. Time is your friend when it comes to investing. You want to start as early as possible. And also, if you start early with investing and something bad happens and mistakes are made and money is lost, you have time to recoup. When you're older and closer to retirement and you screw things up or the stock market just tanks, you don't have a lot of time to fix it, unfortunately. Now, does that mean you shouldn't save for retirement if you're getting older and you haven't started yet? No, that's not what I'm telling you. You better start saving. I don't care what age you are. You gotta have money set aside for retirement. The best time to plant an oak tree is 20 years ago or today. Get it? Best time to start saving for retirement is long, long ago. But if you haven't, you're starting today. So what are some other benefits of the Roth IRA? Well, because you've already paid taxes on your income, you've paid taxes on the money you are contributing to that account, you can pull that money out 
prior to retirement without fees or penalties if you have some kind of emergency and you need that money. You can only pull out what you've contributed, not what you've earned on your investments. You can also continue making contributions to your Roth IRA past retirement age and your heirs can inherit it. And there are no mandated withdrawals from your Roth IRA as there are with your traditional IRA. With your traditional IRA, they're going to make you pull money out and you're going to be paying taxes on it. Now those are your basic simple features of the two types of IRAs. But as you all know, I am a social worker. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. That's my disclaimer. So you got to do your own research. You got to educate yourself. Got to make wise decisions, but you need to save. Amy, why? Why do I need to save for retirement? I'm going to get social security. Well, are you? None of us know what the future of social security is. And by the way, it's not enough. Social security is never going to be enough to provide all your needs. No. What if you have a pension or a 401k? You can't rely on those either. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. It's good to have social security. It's great to have a pension if the pension's honored when it comes time for you to retire. But none of those things alone is going to provide for your needs in retirement. You have to save on your own. You have to save for retirement on your own. You have to, I'm not kidding. Now, one rule of thumb is that to be comfortable in retirement, you need to have an income that's at least 75% of what you were earning when you were working. That's quite a bit of money. Social Security is not gonna be 75% of what you were earning. As a government employee, I'm supposed to get a pension. Whether or not that's going to happen is anybody's guess, and a lot of it has to do with the political climate, who's the governor, what party's in control, what the financial situation of the state is. But even if I do get my pension, I believe it will be at the rate of 45% of what my earnings were. 45% probably not going to do it for me, if I get the pension at all. Okay, Amy, I'm on board. I'm going to save for my retirement, and that makes me very happy. But now, you ask, where do I put my money? What kind of fund are you talking about? You can set up any number of types of funds to be your Roth IRA. I would say the majority of people buy into a mutual fund through some kind of financial brokerage company like your Vanguard or your Franklin Templeton or your Fidelity. Well, hold on, what's a mutual fund? A mutual fund is like a big old bucket full of all sorts of different stocks and bonds. So instead of saying, okay, well, I'm gonna invest in my retirement, I'm gonna buy me a whole bunch of Google stock. Instead of doing that, and having all your retirement eggs in the Google basket, you're going to spread out your risk by investing in a mutual fund and in the giant cauldron of stocks that this mutual fund is, you're going to have some Google stock, some AT&T stock, some Coca-Cola stock. That would be your large cap type fund because those are your large companies. They tend to be more stable. So if one stock tanks, you're not going to lose everything because you've got your money spread out across all the stocks that are held in this fund. You might want to invest in a small cap fund. Those are smaller companies that have room for growth. Growth sounds good. There are mutual funds that just invest in companies internationally or in developing nations. There are mutual funds that will be solely investing in eco-friendly companies. You do your research and you pick your fund. But one thing to keep in mind, these funds are managed by people who are earning a lot of money. Where's that money coming from? It's coming from the fees that you're paying on that fund. Well, you wanna keep as much of your money 
as you can. So you want to find a fund that has the lowest fees. You also want to bear in mind that over time, most funds, most individual stocks do not outperform the stock market as a whole in general. So unless you think you have this fabulous skill at stock picking and timing the market and so forth, you might want to opt to invest in a mutual fund that follows a particular stock index. Those are called index funds. What is a stock index? There are quite a few stock indices. Those are things you've heard of like the Dow Jones average. Now, for example, you might want to invest in a fund that follows the Russell 2000. That's a stock index of like the top 2000 companies. So there's no thought really put into managing that fund. That fund will just buy stock in those 2000 companies that the Russell 2000 index follows. Hence, your fees for that fund are going to be very low. And you can certainly do a Google search saying, what are the lowest cost index funds? And a whole bunch of things will pop up. You can do your research and you can pick one. So with a mutual fund, you're minimizing your risk. You're allowing yourself to buy little bits of all sorts of different companies. And you're hopefully finding a fund with the lowest possible fees. So more of your money stays your money. Now, if you want to just go ahead and buy individual stocks for your Roth IRA, you can do that. You can open up an account with an online trader like Scott Trade or Ameritrade or one of those type of companies. You start a fund and you designate it as your Roth IRA. You can buy whatever stock you want to buy. Stick it in that fund. All right, now, I'm on board. I want to buy me some of those mutual fund shares. How much am I allowed to contribute? Very good question. You were paying attention when I said that there will be limits on how much you can invest. Currently, with the Roth IRA, you can invest up to $5,500 a year. But if you're 50 or over, you can invest $6,500 a year to make up for lost time because you're getting older and you're getting close to retirement and you're panicking. And you have to have earned income, obviously, because you have to pay income tax on the money before putting it in the Roth IRA. You cannot invest more money than you earn. So let's say you're 19 years old and you have a part-time job while you're going to college and you earn $3,000. You can't put $5,500 into your Roth IRA because you only earned $3,000. You can put $3,000 in your Roth IRA. Again, I encourage you to do your own research, make your own choices, but please don't think that a company pension or a 401k or social security is gonna provide for all your needs in retirement. Please don't count on any of them even being there. You gotta take responsibility for your own future. Hey, yeah, live in the moment, enjoy life, be present in every blessed moment of every day, but plan for your future as well. So choose the type of IRA that makes the most sense for you with your current income and tax rate. And save, 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 save. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it made sense. If you haven't already subscribed, click to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up below if you like this content and uplifting presentation. Please leave comments and questions below. And have a fantastic day.